You know, fantastic fiction is a great place to discover books, and your local library is a great place to pick them up for next to nothing. Sometime in the future, humanity has spread across the solar system, but there is tension between Earth, Mars, and the people inhabiting the outer reaches of the system. War is coming, but is it due to superpower greed, or is it something far more sinister? Third-person past tense, with chapters alternating their viewpoint between the two main protagonists, a belted detective called Miller, and a former Earth naval officer, now ice hauler, called Holden. The writing flows well enough, although it isn't anything special, but bits do go on a little, which I will come to momentarily. The cover proudly displays a quote from one George R. R. Martin, stating, Kick-ass space opera. We'll ignore the apparent love Americans have for sticking the boot into poor defenseless donkeys, and skip right along to the issue that I have with that statement. It ain't. It's actually kind of annoying, because the basics generally are pretty good. The setup isn't too bad, uh, the characters certainly have their moments, and the way that humanity has adapted itself to survive in the hostile environments of the belt and indeed the solar system at large is both fascinating and largely believable. It's also, as I said, not a terribly written piece. Uh, nothing special, but everything flows nicely, it's easy to read, and the mid-scene chapter transitions are actually quite nicely done. So, what's the problem? Well, first and foremost, there is a large amount of repetition and restatement. Uh, there will be several paragraphs of a character working through some event or other that we had just read about. Then they'll have a conversation with another character where the same ground is covered yet again. Whilst I certainly have no problem with characters puzzling through events that have affected them in some manner, I think it would have worked better if their introspection either A. ended with a paragraph along the lines of um, Holden talked it over with Naomi. After getting out their disbelief at what happened, what they saw, they tried to work out what to do about it. And then go into the spoken conversation. Or B. Have all the introspection given in spoken dialogue instead of internal monologue. This would hopefully avoid unnecessary repetition and also perhaps break things down more succinctly than they currently are. In that sort of vein, there are more moments than I would have liked where certain actions are given far more detail than was actually needed. Specifically, any time a group sits down to eat, so much time is given over to detailing who sat where, how the meal was prepared, who was preparing the meal, what the meal was made from, when someone takes a drink. Basically, epic amounts of shit that have no bearing whatsoever on the story, and would, in any sane world, be called filler. Much like with Tigana, with some judicious editing, this could be 20-30% to 30 shorter and be better for it. Just because something calls itself space opera does not mean it has to ramble on incessantly. My next issue is with at least one of the two main characters. Miller, I'm a little undecided on. He's a borderline alcoholic detective who wears a noticeable hat and has occasional bouts of competence in amongst his developing insanity. Holden, on the other hand, is a fucking idiot. But he's not just any sort of idiot. Oh, no, 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 no. He's an idealistic, self-righteous idiot. His idiocy nearly gets himself and his crew nuked, his idealism kicks off a war, and his self-righteousness would have let a man live and get away with doing something that, and let's not beat about the bush here, made a lot of what happened during the final solution look like a preschool party. But the biggest problem I have is that it took so damn long for anything remotely interesting to happen. Earth is an overpopulated hive, blah, 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 blah. Mars and Earth don't like each other, etc, etc. They both pick on the belt because of reasons. Yeah, maybe two-thirds of this book is given over to shit I've seen a dozen times and care less about each time. And when something potentially interesting does start to happen, when the title starts to have some meaning... I don't know. It... it 
just didn't feel like a good enough payoff. And the day is saved not through the judicious application of nuclear weapons, not through the cunning and guile of the characters, not even via a well-placed Captain Picard speech. No, the day gets saved because... As you can probably tell, I'm not overstruck on this particular tale of interplanetary squabbling. Uh, despite everything, there are some good bits. Uh, the escape from the battleship, for example, uh, final, the final overlay of pun notwithstanding, was an interesting, genuinely tense and very well written sequence. But uh, the, the problem is that this is one of those novels that isn't bad enough to be unreadable, but for me it isn't good enough to want to spend a whole lot of time reading. Now, whilst I'm still undecided on the remainder of the Clone series, although I think I might actually um, read a few more of those, I can say with certainty that I really, really don't care what happens next in this series.